so what i had done is uh, i have my btp account created so i just logged in over here for the people who don't have you can go to the cockpit.hana trial on demand over here and you can register your btp register for your btp account all you should be having is wow i am on the same one so Anyway, I mean, uh, we would get a kind of uh, any sort of uh, social media site. Same way you do have option of sign up register. You would be able to register yourself and here you would need two things which should be very unique. Your email ID and your mobile number. These two unique things if you have, you would be able to create your trial BTP account which would last for 30 days. But in case we are a regular user, it would get extended to 45 days first then 90 and then 365 days. It would get extended automatically. As soon as you start coming on the BTP trial account after 365 days, your all the work that you have done would get cleared out to have it reset it because it is a kind of a you can think of a BTP as a public cloud. Multiple people are sharing the same platform. OK, if I just go to the trial account over here. Nice. Okay, so I am in my BTP account right now. And I can see multiple components. So for example, this is a sub account I can see and everything. Let's just think of a sub account from a perspective of. I do have a. I do have an organization saying organization. ABC. So this organization, whichever is there that would have. A dedicated global account, so this is my global account, so this is my trial account, but in case you do have a ABC organization, your organization, for example, EDU oceans. If I do have a, so I can say not trial, but a real account, it would be for my dedicated EDU oceans. I can have multiple global accounts as well, not an issue. Depending on multiple subsidiaries a organization is having, you can have multiple global account. For one dedicated global account, you can have multiple sub account. Why a sub account is required? Because for an ABC, I do have multiple system. I do have a dev system where I want all the development work to be done. I do have a UAT system. I do have a prod system, or let's just say I do have some sort of pre prod system as well. Any number of system do you have, and you want to work with this landscape you can dedicatedly create the replica the number of sub account likewise so for example i do have a trial over here same way you can have n number of such sub account so as a part of this sub account so now let's just go back to the question that we were having or let's just say go back to the concept that we were seeing that i just started my organization just started using btp and now what i want is my all the on premise application that used to be served. OK, that uh, that used to actually work on premise. I am fine them running on on premise, but my actual front end application, I want them to come via route of BTP. So in future, whenever I want to migrate to BTP, it would be easier for me. Perfect. So it means we are working on this node on premise. Perfect. And this on premise node, if I just go over here, so this trial, what it would become? It would become my dev system. In my dev system, I want my Fury development application, applications development to be done. Then I would be migrating it likewise. If I go in my sub account over here, I would find a section. We would be going with the section as and when we need. So, for example, I do have a section called connectivity. Perfect. In the connectivity, I do have a concept of destinations. OK, so for example, I do have a concept of destination. So here I do have connected my backend system like EDU oceans S4H. You can have your cloud connectors as well that you can also connect it to. So currently I don't have any sort of cloud connector created over here. We would need an application that is something we would also be coming up through. So what a cloud connector would ideally need? 
what a destination ideally needs. So let's just go from that perspective. Whenever you are having a front end application, you are developing a UI application and you need a service to back it up with, right? So the service that you are backing up it with would need a service endpoint. And that endpoint, uh, whichever you are uh, generating for that particular backend service would be a service endpoint. Now for your BTP to connect to your actual backend system, for example, S4H over here, what we would need is we would need a particular dedicated. OK, let's just say I am creating a new destination for me to create a new destination. I would need a name, a description, a URL. The target URL where actually I would be able to uh, point to my system. So this is my URL for my actual backend system, the S4H system where I would be working on. I am not going in the account, but yeah, if you see this is my system where I would be connecting to this S4H system, then this system would have a URL, a service maintained, and that service I am, I'll be maintaining over here. You can have multiple kind of authentication that you can also dedicate to. So for example, if you want to go with credentials, the basic authentication and likewise, the single sign on is a very much into discussion these days, right? For me to work on a single sign on, I would need a authentication token. So in that particular case, you would be going with a O or two SML assertion and you would be having a token service URL. We would be authenticating and you would be able to retrieve all this. Okay. But that's a separate topic, but for our knowledge, it's a good thing that we should be knowing this. That so for example, be on public domain. Yeah, that particular. Uh, sorry, can you please come again? The URL which you are connecting, it should be a pub public domain URL. Or? Uh, so you can think of this URL as your um, external service URL. So it, let's just say if I am talking about a SAP ERP system. Mm -hmm. OK, in a SAP ERP system, you do have SICF <coughs> where you are maintaining its relevant uh, external aliases, how that uh, system can be referred to and you can generate their URL from there. So that URL is this using which on a browser I can connect to my SAP system. If it's not a SAP system, it's something else, then it should be a public URL, public cloud URL where your system would be reachable. Or sometime if it's a private one, then you should actually maintain your current systems information as a whitelisted one. Okay, for example, there are certain <coughs> sensitive APIs which you want to connect to, but they are very secured that they won't allow anyone to connect it to till the time it's not whitelisted. So in that case, a concept of whitelisting would also come, but that should occur. Uh, that should uh, take place at the service which you are consuming. So here we don't have a concept of whitelisting, but here what we have is the URL, the system where you want to connect it to. You should maintain its URL, but in case of a third party application, non SAP one, you have to go with the whitelisting, the public URL. In a one word. Okay. Once we have the SAP system, we would also be connecting the live system over here because I had connected this, but my just my account just got expired, so I won't be able to show it to you now. But I will be connecting because I feel, yeah, it's not invalid. So I will be just uh, connecting our system, and we would be also during our cap application, we would be connecting with that for sure. Now, so this is how we would be able to migrate smoothly or I can say slowly our individual application which were working on the on premise and we would our application would be able to connect to my uh, destination system via cloud connector concept because this destination that we whatever we are creating this particular URL or I can say in case of this the very I can say yeah this URL where whatever we are maintaining should be part of my cloud connectors, then only the connector would be able to create that. We would be uh, learning how I can create the cloud connectors as well. So that short of cloud connector whenever we are creating, then only the, my first end point for my URL to get hit is this cloud connector. It would say OK, whether I do have a right set of cloud connector uh, established. Yes, it would go to the destination and check. OK, what is the type of authentication you have specified? It says basic authentication, then you would get a pop up for the credentials. If you are going with a assertion token, 
it would search for a authentication token from your uh, let's just say cache if it is there then it would be passed to your uh, actual a service endpoint for it to get authenticated so for example i mentioned it over here that i do have oauth2 sml assertion here if you see there is something called token service url this token service url is something that can be used for authentication in a cloud we do have a call uaa user access authentication this is something we would be learning if i just go over here service marketplace yeah we would be coming on to this but let me just as we are over here let me just tell you there is something called authorization and trust management now when we are developing an application let's just say in my initial demo maybe uh, most of you were there and you uh, learned that whenever we are executing an application um, ideally it uh, if i am running it locally it would go via local host and whenever i am creating something or i am managing something it would say anonymous it means the user is not known but how the user would be authenticated how i can restrict that only the authenticated users are the one who are who should be able to access my application and that can be done using this service called authorization and trust management it is called uaa user access and authorization management okay the same concept used to be there in the old uh, let's just say sap hana access a okay and this hana access a also used to have some sort of access uaa service those who you uh, who would have work on the ua would be knowing this sap hana access a also have some sort of user access authorization service and that is what the authorization and trust management over here is it's the same thing just the environment is now differing it's no longer an on premise it's a cloud one okay now so once we do have an application uh let's just say application which is connecting to on premise the connection would go via the cloud connector that's how we would be connecting if i do have some sort of service instances so what is this service instances for me uh, to actually connect to my application i would need a destination service connection using a cloud connector but for me to connect to some sort of native cloud services i would need a service instances so let's just say the one which i mentioned over here if i subscribe for that i would be able to find it in the instances and subscription so these are nothing but my instances and subscription so these are the two things which would come into play and this whole bunch would get executed in a sub account on the cloud foundry level on a sap btp cloud foundry runtime okay and here we would also be able to maintain let's just say if i just go over here uh let's just say over here in the cloud foundry okay we do have a set of members okay so there are multiple set of members what is the role of that and uh, what sort of security group they belong to we can create such security groups as well and those security group or let's just say members who are authorized to use this we would be going via the members and here currently i do have one member going forward we can add more members so we would be trying to consume our service in a cross way let's just say i would be generating a service are you able to use it i can restrict some users who are actually able to use those services or not that sort of configuration we would be doing but if you now visualize this in from um, diagram from a btp platform perspective this sub account has a cloud foundry where all the applications are running and we do have a business user and the platform user or i can say i am now a admin of this okay so i am a space manager so i would become the admin user and i would be able to administrate what all users would be able to connect to this now let's just start from the beginning i hope there is a bit of correlation you all are able to uh, connect when it comes to a yeah now so let's just say i am for the first time over here i want to create a sub account i don't have a trial account over here what would i do i'll just say i'll create a sub account 
sub account has a multiple display name. For example, I want to create some sort of dev system. And it would generate a some sort of subdomain name automatically. Why it would generate this? Because this subdomain needs to be unique. It's not only you. It's like n number of user who are in the cloud foundry in this region. The region, what region I am currently working on? Europe Frankfurt. Because that's where actually I created my BTP account in. This is nothing but my data center. So if I am having this particular subdomain created, then it should be very unique. I cannot have a clashing, and that's why if you see this subdomain would be uh, suggested. You can also change it as per your need, but ideally, it's a suggestion to always go with what the system is suggesting. And here, I do have two services. Why I do have two services over here? Because these are currently only available services in my trial account. So if you are going with the HANA trial, this is the only one which you would be able to see. Because these are the services to which in the real organization, the organization would be paying for this. That I want my everything and anything to uh, start working on Amazon Web Services. It should work on Microsoft Azure. So these are my data centers. These are the provider of my service. Okay, these are the provider of my service. This is my Amazon Web Services, and it is having, uh, let's just say, this is a particular CF US 10. Once this is uh, generated, it would generate an endpoint. So, for example, what was my this one? It was Amazon Web Service. Let me just generate it with Microsoft Azure. Here, I do have a provider AWS. I can generate one more with the Singapore. Okay, it has a parent. What is this parent? This parent is nothing but a global account. Like you have a trial. You can think of a UAT system. You do have. I am generating a quality uh, dev system. I can say dev system sub account. And here I would be doing all the connections, all the applications which would be running would create an instance intermediately on this particular account automatically. Okay. Whenever there any sort of application, many of you would have heard of a term beta, right? So whenever we have a application, uh, or let's just say whenever we do have some sort of functionality feature which an organization is generating, then then there are certain features which are running on a trial basis. Organization like just say SAP has developed some sort of features, but they are not yet made public. They are under uh, some sort of regression analysis testing that whether we can make it public or not, and they may or may not be stable based on some sort of analysis in future. They may also uh, remove those features and those features are called beta features. Okay. Unable the use of beta features. You can't disable this setting once you have enabled, but you should avoid using the beta functionality in a production environment. SAP shall not be liable for any errors arising due to such functionality because these are not yet pro uh, ready for production use. SAP can anytime pull back those functionality because they have just released as a beta only for a limited people of, uh, to use that and not in an actual production version. Okay, so I won't go with this. This is not suggestible any time to go with the beta features. And don't go with the production uh, environment generation. So here if you see dev system I am generating, it is onboarding me. I do have two separate providers, Microsoft Azure and the Amazon Web Services, which is currently generating it. 